Man, why is my internet so slow right now? Yo, what's up? Yo, Sheet. So I've been getting a lot of lag recently and my download speeds are absolute trash. What do you think could be the issue? Well, there can be so many issues that cause lag or slow download speeds, but it's gonna take longer than like 60 seconds to explain. I got time today, let's do it. All right, bet, let's do it. All right, so first I'm gonna go through a diagram of how the internet works, and then I'm gonna get into some of your components of your home network in order to give you some tips and tricks on how to maximize your internet speeds and performance. Okay, this is a very quick and very simplified diagram of how the internet works. The internet is basically a collection of computers or servers all around the world. And your ISP or internet service provider has towers located all around your area in order to connect to the internet. Then the data gets sent from the tower that your service provider controls all the way to your home's modem and router. And lastly, not included in this diagram because I just kind of ran out of space, but your modem and router sends the information to the devices in your home through wireless signal like Wi-Fi or ethernet cables to your devices like your laptop, your phone, your PC, anything. Now this area right here is what we're gonna focus on the most, but let's not forget about your service provider because it is the most important first step when it comes to optimizing your internet connection. Your ISP ultimately determines what your maximum internet speeds can be and it also determines determines the latency, specifically the latency between the ISP tower and your home. Depending on where you live, there's a bunch of different ISPs out there. There's Comcast, Xfinity, Verizon, AT&T, Spectrum, whatever it may be, your ISP ultimately determines what your maximum internet speeds will be, and it also determines the latency, but specifically the latency between the ISP tower itself and your home not everything that goes on in your home itself. If you live in an urban or even suburban area, then there's probably not gonna be too much difference between the latency depending on which ISP you choose, but it's still very important because it's the first step in the overall picture of latency between when data is sent from the internet all the way to your PC, console, or your phone. Now let's talk about speeds a little bit because this is an area that I see get often confused. When you sign up to an ISP plan, your speeds will say something like 1 Gbps or 100 Mbps. Mbps, and these stands for gigabits per second and megabits per second, not megabytes or gigabytes. There's a big difference between bytes and bits. One byte is equal to eight bits. So 1000 megabits is only equal to around 125 megabytes. Now I know this is a little confusing because when you're buying storage for your PC or thinking about storage on your phone, those are measured in bytes and not bits. Internet speeds are always measured in bits because I assume that it's just the more accurate unit to use. Let's talk a little bit about latency or ping because these are pretty much the same thing. Latency is measured in milliseconds and it's the time that it takes for your device to send data all the way from your home to the internet. For gamers, this is really important because you wanna to try to keep latency as low as possible or else you probably will see some lag in your games. Now, as far as which ISP you should choose, I recommend going with one that has a fiber optic plan because this will give you the best download and upload speeds and good latency as well. Having fast download and upload speeds are great if you're a streamer because you need to send a lot of video information to the internet, so that's a lot of Data. But if you live in an area where none of the ISPs have fiber optics or you simply can't afford it, then the other options are still good too, just as long as you're getting a good download and upload speed. I would say stick around maybe somewhere in the 100 megabits per second and upload speeds around maybe 30 megabits per second. As I said before, if you're a gamer, then download speeds are not going to affect your gameplay. What's really important is your latency, but download speeds will affect how fast you can download new games and updates for those games. So overall, you should choose a service provider that fits your needs, has good pricing options and good reviews. So for my case, I chose Verizon Files for my home internet and I get about 300 megabytes down and 300 megabytes upload. Let's get into the next stage of optimizing your internet and that's going to be your router and modem. Usually your service provider will give you a modem and router as part of your plan, but you can also use your own if you want to. Now this device right here is a modem router combo. It actually has both devices built in and the modem part is the part that you'll plug in that spiky little twisty part, the coaxial cable, that's the modem and that pretty much provides internet to your entire home. And then also the router part sends the wireless signal to my devices and it also has a bunch of different ethernet ports that I can plug in if I need it to hardwire multiple devices in my home. Now when it comes to getting the best speeds and lowest latency for your router, it's gonna depend on several different factors. The first is the Wi-Fi version. Now the Wi-Fi version that your router supports will determine the speeds and lowest latencies that you can reach for your other wireless devices. And there are different Wi-Fi versions out there. There's Wi-Fi 5, 6, 6E, and 7. Each of these different Wi-Fi versions have their own maximum theoretical speeds, and I'll make sure to leave a chart somewhere in this video. But 
Those speeds are dependent on that Wi-Fi version and so is the latency. Currently, the latest Wi-Fi version is Wi-Fi 7 and routers that have Wi-Fi 7 are really expensive, but you probably don't need all of that because internet speeds from your ISP usually cap out at 1000 megabits and the Wi-Fi 7 maximum speeds are way, way higher than that. So you don't even need all of that. Also to get the maximum benefits for those Wi-Fi versions, then your device is also gonna need to support that specific Wi-Fi version. So for example, if you have a Wi-Fi 7 router and wanna reach those top speeds, then you're gonna need a Wi-Fi 7 capable laptop, computer, phone, game console, whatever it may be. I recommend getting a router that supports Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6E because those will give you enough headroom in order to reach the speeds that you need. If you wanna spend more money and get Wi-Fi 7, then you can as well and it'll give you a bit of future proofing so when new devices that come out and support Wi-Fi 7, you won't need to upgrade your router. Now let's talk about the ethernet ports on the router because this is also gonna determine how fast your internet speeds are for anything that's hardwired with an ethernet cable. Here you want to make sure that you have enough ports to connect to all your devices and you also want to make sure that the ports support at least gigabit speeds. Now remember one gigabit equals 125 megabytes and this is pretty good speed when you're downloading things from the internet. There are some routers that have ethernet ports that support 2.5 gigabits or even 10 gigabits per second but those are going to be really expensive and you likely don't need them because again speeds that you're getting from your ISP are not going to match those. Those are really for people who are transferring files or data between between their devices in their home network. So in quick summary, if your ISP did not provide you with a router or you just wanted to use your own, then make sure it has at least Wi-Fi 6 and it has enough gigabit ports on the back of it. Now let's get into the ways you're actually connecting your devices to the internet and that's with Wi-Fi or ethernet and each has their own pros and cons. I'm gonna say this right now and if you only take one thing from this video, then I hope it's this one. If you are a gamer, then ethernet is absolute king. You should always use ethernet when you're gaming because it's going to provide you the lowest latencies and most stable connection possible. Actually, this tip is not only for gamers. If you have anything connected to the internet and you want to have a stable, fast, reliable connection, then you should go ethernet and you should find any way impossible to connect it through ethernet rather than choosing Wi-Fi. I do realize that sometimes it's difficult to hardwire everything in your setup because it's gonna depend on what your home or apartment is set up like, but I will go over some options that you may have that you may not know of that you can use to hardwire things if it's harder to do that in your house. But first, let me explain the pros and cons of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is really convenient, obviously. It can support tens to even hundreds of devices connected to the same router or network. And it's also good for casual browsing or streaming, watching videos, casual stuff like that. But as you already may know, Wi-Fi is not the most stable. No matter how advanced the technology gets, ethernet will always be best in terms of a stable, fast connection. All right, so you've chosen to hardwire the important things in your setup, so what kind of ethernet cable should you get? Now, similar to Wi-Fi, ethernet cables also have different versions or categories, and each of them support a different speed and latencies and protection. For most households and devices, I suggest getting an ethernet cable that is at least CAT6 or 6A, because this will support the bandwidth that you need in order to get those download and upload speeds from your ISP, or even when talking between different devices. The higher categories do support more bandwidth and speeds, but unless you're transferring large files all the time between devices in your network, then you likely don't need those higher cat versions. One thing you may also see when you're looking around at ethernet cables is shielded versus unshielded cables. Shielded cables offer you better protection and stability against things like electrical interference. So if you're running ethernet cables through your walls and have a bunch of electrical big appliances, then you should probably get a shielded cable. But if you're not doing this and you're just using an ethernet cable to run around your home normally, then you don't need a shielded cable. Unshielded will work just fine. Now let's talk about ways to actually get a hardwired connection because depending on your home setup, I know it can be hard. You may already know that you can buy a really long ethernet cable and just run it around your house to wherever you need it, but sometimes it's hard to hide those cables. One solution I found is getting an ethernet cable that matches the colors of your walls and also is flat so it's much easier to tuck underneath things or just hide away and run along the walls. I got this ethernet cable from Amazon and it wasn't too pricey at all. Right now I use it to connect pretty much all my gaming devices and run around my house and I'll make sure to leave a link to this in the description. Okay, let's say you got your really long ethernet cable, it's plugged into your router that's all the way upstairs and you plug it into your gaming PC which is in the basement, but now let's say you also have like a PS5 or a Nintendo Switch or another computer that you also want to have hardwired. Are you going to just run four different ethernet cables all the way from your router which is upstairs down to your basement? 
there's a better solution. For this scenario, what you want to do is use an Ethernet switch. And basically, an Ethernet switch is a device that allows you to take one Ethernet source and plug in multiple devices. And it has multiple Ethernet ports on the back of it, just like a router does, but it doesn't provide any wireless connectivity. It only provides you access to multiple Ethernet ports using one Ethernet source. In fact, let me show you what my Ethernet switch looks like really quick. Sorry for the mess, but this is my ethernet switch it is connected in my basement here. And as you can see, it has multiple ports on the back so that I can connect other devices to the same ethernet source. The ethernet source is coming from my router, which is upstairs and it's wired all the way through my home. So it goes up, the source is coming from upstairs and it comes down to this ethernet switch that I have here. And then from the ethernet switch, I have more ethernet cords plugged into it. So let me just set that right there. So this ethernet cable, for instance, is connected to the switch and it's going all the way down into my basement, into my setup and to my gaming PC, which is over there. Now these next two devices are very situational. The first device is a Mocha adapter. Now this device basically allows you to have an ethernet connection through a coaxial cable. So if you look around in your home or apartment, you may see along the walls, the coax connection there. You can actually use those ports to connect to a Mocha adapter, and then it'll give you an ethernet port, which you can then have a hardwired connection. Now you may not get the same speeds as if you were connected directly to your main router, but it'll still provide you a very stable and pretty good connection some of the times. And the second device is a power line adapter. Now these are actually really cool when I learned about them. A power line adapter is basically a device that plugs into the outlet of your wall and it has an ethernet port on it so that you connect the ethernet port to your computer and then the data signal is sent through the electrical wiring of your home or apartment. For this to work, you actually need two adapters. One that's plugged in and next to your router where you plug the ethernet cable into, and then the other is plugged into your outlet near your gaming PC or whatever other device that you wanna to connect to, and it has another ethernet port there. Power line adapters can sometimes be a hit or a miss because it depends on the electrical wiring of your home or apartment and if everything is on the same circuitry, but it's cheap enough to try out and sometimes it'll give you a stable connection. Now, what if you wanted to extend your wireless signal? Say you have a really big home and your wireless signal is really weak at one end of the house, but really strong at the other. What do you do then? If you're in this scenario, you're probably thinking about getting a Wi-Fi extender, but I highly suggest against getting Wi-Fi extenders because there are much better options out there. The reason why Wi-Fi extenders are bad is because depending on placement, they take an already weak signal and just make it stronger in, in another place. Just because you're getting a stronger signal in the place that you put the Wi-Fi extender doesn't mean that your connection is going to be nearly as stable or as fast or as low latency as if you were connected to your main wireless router. Instead, if you have a really big home or apartment and you need to extend the wireless signal, then I recommend getting a mesh network or doing access points. A mesh network is basically a collection of tiny smaller routers that are placed throughout your home and they work together to boost the Wi-Fi signal throughout your entire home or apartment. Now this working together part is key because unlike Wi-Fi extenders, the mesh network works together and can detect where you're at in your home and it'll provide you the best connection to whatever router you're closest to. And from my experience, mesh networks have been a lot more more reliable than Wi-Fi extenders. And lastly, access points are also a really good option. An access point is a device that extends the wired network by providing another wireless signal in whatever area that you need it to. So unlike a mesh network, which is a collection of devices working together, an access point is pretty standalone. And they do provide a very stable wireless connection, but a downside is that they need to be hardwired to wherever your main router or connection is. Just remember, when it comes to Wi-Fi versus ethernet, you should place anything that's latency sensitive or very important and you need a stable connection using ethernet and then everything else that's casual you can use wi-fi now let's go through some real world use cases so that you can better understand the how and why when it comes to optimizing your internet performance so if you're a gamer and have a gaming pc or a console then i highly recommend using a hardwired ethernet connection in order to get the most stability and the lowest latency now when it comes to download speeds for gaming pcs specifically you may need to also check out what speeds does your motherboard ethernet port support 
Most motherboards nowadays come with a gigabit ethernet port, which means that it can support a one gigabit per second internet speed and transfer speeds. But if you need something even faster than that, then you may need to get a separate ethernet card or adapter. If you absolutely need to game while on Wi-Fi, just make sure you're using the highest band available that has a strong signal like 5G or 6G. The higher Wi-Fi bands will provide better bandwidth so you can download games faster, but it'll also provide lower latencies as well. And if you're a streamer now or want to be a streamer in the future, just make sure that you have great upload and download speeds in order to have the best stream quality. To do this, you want to first choose a service provider and plan that matches those needs, and you want to make sure that all of your devices in your home network support the speeds that you need. And when I say devices in your home, I mean everything, like your router, the ethernet cable, the port on your gaming PC, you all need to make sure that it supports the speeds that you need. Another scenario is if you need to transfer large files between the devices located in your home or apartment pretty frequently, like if you have a network attached storage, for example. If this is the case, then again, you're gonna need to make sure that every port, cable, and device in your home network, anything that's connected to your network attached storage, has the latest technology in order to support the speeds that you desire. For a quick example, let's say all of the devices in your home supports one gigabit per second transfer speeds, but you got a cable that, for example, only supported 100 megabits per second, then your network speed and transfer speeds are gonna be bottlenecked by that cable. If you're using that cable to connect to your device, it's only gonna get 100 megabits per second. And just so you know, if you need 2.5 gigabit or 10 gigabit transfer speeds, then it's gonna get pretty pricey. For the last scenario, let's say you're having a party and everyone brings their phones and laptops and are connected to the same wireless connection. For this case, you wanna make sure that everyone's phones are actually using the lower wireless band so that the devices in your home network that are using the higher frequencies aren't clogged up with all of those phones and devices. And that's it. First of all, I wanna thank you so much for watching this entire video. If you have any questions about anything that we discussed today, make sure you put it in the comments because I will go through every comment that I can and help answer it. And I'm sure there are, that there are other experts in the comment section as well that you can help get advice from. If you like content like this, feel free to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.